What's going on there, Reject Nation? We are here today to watch the fourth episode of Peacemaker. Loving the frick out of this series so much. Guys, if you could do an act of peace by hitting that like button, that would be amazeballs. Also, if you could subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified when our next reaction for Peacemaker is up, that would be very much appreciated. Big thank you to the boys over at Prepper for helping us edit down these highlights. Lastly, full-length watch-alongs or at our Patreon page. Special thank you to all who have joined our Patreon page and become Superajax. Your support has been overwhelming in every way possible. So thank you for doing that to our emotions. Let's get into it. Thank the Lord for James Gunn. You'll fall over all the time and look stupid and everyone will laugh at you. Who's gonna laugh at you for falling over because you don't have a toe? <laughs> <laughs> You can't walk if you lose your metatarsal. That's like the knuckle of the pinky toe, but if you just lose your pinky, it's fine. <laughs> what are we gonna do about him? <laughs> hey, no! no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the response. <laughs> right now, the world needs a son of a bitch, and you're the only one I got. Well, I guess him now, too. I once saw him eat an entire Wendy's restaurant. Did you learn he ate a restaurant? No, matter eater lad. That's his power. He can eat anything. <laughs> hey, these butterflies are like alien bugs that crawl up into human brains and control people. Get some rest. Come back tonight. We'll explain the whole thing. Finally. Yeah. It's about time. Hey, swing by my dad's on the way home. He's got a helmet I think I can use in all this. Oh, no. Listen, uh, I've been meaning to thank you for allowing me to be tortured last night. <laughs> you were just supporting me and helping me to become the best me that I could be. Someone who doesn't spill the beans while being electrocuted and having half his toe cut off. You seem to be walking okay. Well, I'll probably never walk as good again. <laughs> thank you. I've never had a friend quite like you. <laughs> Greatest weapon is passive aggression. <laughs> you were too much of a candy ass to take a little torture. Oh yeah, I would have been real guilty. You see, that, that right there was angry. No, it wasn't, it was normal. I was, I was agreeing with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy. facility has been closed and forensics teams have been sweeping the area. Zoo officials say they have no idea how the gorilla was stolen You'll see that gorilla. Gorilla Grod. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. You said you were a superhero like Batman. Do you have a coterie of supervillains? No, he doesn't. So maybe you're not a superhero after all. Oh, old man. My coterie of supervillains is six feet fucking under. There you see, Batman doesn't kill people. <laughs> He's a jackass who wrestles with murderers dressed like clowns and throws them in prison so they can break out of prison and then murder more people. Riddle me this, how many people you think Batman's indirectly murdered by being too much of a candy ass? Oh, oh. You're definitely a supervillain. You're gonna end up in jail with your father soon enough. Oop, he uh, revealed it. Yeah. If you want to come back, we can talk about this like adults. No, no, my dad's in jail. I'm going to see him. Smith, I don't think that's wise. Oh, yeah, well, fuck you, man. You people only fucking care about yourselves anyway. Oh. Me? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's probably because you're the one who framed Peacemaker's father. <laughs> 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 hey, it's like Rick Flagg's shirt. Good catch. Hey, do you want me to take you to the jail, see your dad? Yeah. Even though I know he's a racist. <laughs> Shouldn't you kill him then? No! I'm not gonna kill my dad. Why not? Because I love him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad is not a good man. Not to the world and especially not to you. He's still family. Well, he has to do what he has to do, I guess. I'm taking you vigilante. <laughs> <laughs> do the face thing again. 
Why are you limping? Snowboarding accident, totally unrelated in any way to Vigilante. <laughs> I don't even know who Vigilante is. Who is he? <laughs> People I'm working with, they did their own thing. Switch your fingerprints for mine. They did what? I know, it's fucked up, but I had nothing to do with it. I saw you come out of your mother's cooch. I should have slit your throat then and there. Oh my wow. God. You're a rube like you've always been. I'm not letting my own damn son work for them. I'm no rat, but the first chance I get, I'm spilling everything. Technically, that yeah. <laughs> exactly makes you a rat. Technically, just factually. Get the fuck out of my <laughs> sight. I don't think Chris is ever going to be happy as long as his father's around. Uh-oh. I just wish there was some way he would just. Uh-oh. I look on his face. <laughs> Go away. She's oh, doing it. Yeah. 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 Oh, you are wallery. I gotta go do something. <laughs> oh, I gotta go no. assassinate someone really quick. Fuck. Oh, maybe she wasn't intending to. I can't tell anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just watching him do this. Yeah, I guess. Is he trying to get arrested? I don't care. I'll get on the ground all day long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. I checked the restraints. They were tight. I don't know how the fuck he got loose. Oh. oh. Who the fuck do you think? Judo man. <laughs> He's just eating. Fuck. Yes! Oh. Fuck. I think Cobra Kai just got out. Our reaction to Cobra Kai finale is going up this week. A hallway window. Side double. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Oh, oh. You have a weird, bullishy body. Personal insults? Real mature shrimp. <laughs> you have no idea. Butterflies, they're not what you think they are. <laughs> oh, no. Who did that? Is it? Oh, my oh, God. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. I was going to win that fight. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! I never killed a man before. Oh, you still haven't. Their heart stops beating. They just concentrate and move a kidney up into its place. <laughs> Circulates the blood through the system. No, that's not something that happens. Only the greats, <laughs> just a few times. <laughs> no one has ever replaced their own heart with a kidney. Hey, what do you think he's about to say? <laughs> the butterflies, they're not what you think, they're... Ask him while he's still breathing. <laughs> Love that smug confidence. <laughs> Who is this actor? He's awesome. Yeah. Every time I turn around, one of you is doing something fucked up. <laughs> I thought Walla gave me soldiers. Instead, it's a fucking apple dumpling gang. <laughs> Classic fool. We're the apple dumpling gang. Incompetent dinguses. But they always triumph in the end. <laughs> <laughs> he could kill Vigilante, and without Vigilante, we're taking on the butterflies one man down. Half a man down. The guy's a psychopath. <laughs> This is the four of us against the damn alien invasion. We need a psychopath. Alien invasion. Keep your eye on your goddamn opponent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Let's each say something that we're grateful for that black people have contributed to American culture. <laughs> I'm grateful that black people gave us rock and roll music. <laughs> ZZ Top, 38 Special. All those guys owe everything to black American <laughs> And then white like, redneck music Go, would just dude. sound like, well, what it sounded like before black people, which was the wet, sloppy sounds of fucking your sister. 
<laughs> Which one of you dumb sister fucking oh tiki torch carrying sloth from the Goonies looking pieces of shit wants to go next? Oh, I love you. Your favorite contribution to black American culture was all the black guys who fucked your mom in the ass while you oh, watched from the closet oh, jerky. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh Ooh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go, dude. Ah. On the ground! Now! Both of you! <laughs> the area started it! This dude did nothing! <laughs> You're a bad dad. I need to talk to Detective Shaw now! I need to talk to Detective Shaw! I got information to work on this case! My son's trying to kill me! Get me Detective Shaw! Oh, you, oh no, it just keeps getting worse! What's it say in my file about what my dad did when I was a kid? It says that he trained you to kill from when you were very young, and it says that your brother died under mysterious circumstances, and that you were involved in that. So his dad is playing himself from Walk the Line again. Wrong <laughs> 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 <Her own> kid. <laughs> They can't take his mask off? I was wondering about that. Mm. I feel like you would want to know his identity. Oh. Mm -hmm. Peacemaker. What a joke. <laughs> oh. Wow. Is John Tino you know, always had such emotional death? He's <laughs> like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, he's it's definitely like so grown. perfect in this role. Leora. I think I found something. Great. I'll be right over. He's a butterfly. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, good call. I know I thought it last episode. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I said it. <laughs> I don't remember. When he was talking about not having emotion. Yeah. Or was it not put in the reaction? <laughs> a good call either way. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, talking about his feelings. He might be like a rogue butterfly. Could like be. some of the conflict stuff of learning to feel and everything. Yeah, maybe he's might like... Be clues that he's like, doesn't believe in the cause. Learning humanity feelings. Yeah. Or maybe all the other butterflies are victims of a potential genocide on his part. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It could be either. Well, they're still, like, hunting butterflies. Like, kill them, kill you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, it might be the first one that sides with humanity. Vigilante, you've had a lot of fucking stupid ideas. But a duck in a human costume? <laughs> that's the stupidest idea you've ever fucking had. And it's offensive to me. Because I have a soul. Not a duck. <laughs> 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 Deleted in improv takes. <laughs> <laughs> Best post credit scenes in the biz. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, guys. Wow, that was that was something. Well, that was a very different episode. That was very different. Um, really reflective, real melancholy vibes uh, throughout from beginning to end, and I really appreciate that. You know, it's it's one of the unique things about this show is I think the the way they've been transitioning within their tones, where it starts off very funny, and then eventually, like funny and heightened. And then it was really around, somewhere in episode three, where it started to feel like, okay, we're getting a little bit more of that darker quality to it, a little bit more of that pathos quality. Well, actually, I think it was actually in episode two. Well, it was, it's always been there, actually, now I think about it. It's always sort of been there. It's, it's just been, I think what it has been has been mainly the other qualities have been more the accentuated stuff, where the the fun and the excitement, the high energy, um, you know, the irreverent humor and all that has been a little bit more at the forefront, 
whereas that was supporting and secondary to the character's uh, internal you know, reflections that, that they were going through in this particular episode. It was uh, more on the, the, the deeper end, and I thought it was cool to have you know, this more realistic approach where they've been going on missions, they have Judo Master, but there's a down period time. <laughs> there's mm -hmm. a, And in a movie, it's always go, 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 and then like the settling down, calming moments are usually, you know, like 10 to 20 minutes. And they're not something that you could take 45 minutes for an episode to do. Like, while there's some funny moments in here, and while there's definitely some uh, like cool action, it's not the main takeaway whatsoever. The, the main, like, John Cena's performance here and, and getting the backstory, like, just through... Because I think one thing that James Gunn's style, whether that be translating it with through his writing, communication with directors, editors, he's producer, he's still the helm, still the one who helmed this show. You know, like, we... I think sometimes we think about his music associated with more of a romanticizing type of scene whether that's something as direct as love or attraction and yet here uh, I, I like those flashbacks of him as a child you know like the peacemaker being a joke quality and then you're really humanizing him and showing that he's really just a tortured soul here who's just so lost and yearns for a connection mm -hmm. much like John that's right. In that's every right, right, way. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and we're both, you know, impeccably buff too. It's true. Definitely. Yeah. But at the same time, vigilante is the shit. <laughs> he is such a good character. I even like that really human moment where, um, uh, what's her name? The blonde girl. Harcourt. Sorry. Harcourt. Okay. Where, um, James Gunn's girlfriend. <laughs> he has a <laughs> girlfriend gun. <laughs> where Harcourt and, and Adrian and Chase, when they meet each other at the end, and how there's kind of, how she has an understanding towards him. You know, she can be kind of cold, closed off usually. Mm -hmm. But when, you know, she sees him walking and she picks him up, it's not the way she behaves where it's this very reserved approach towards Chris he uh, you know it's like she sees him and and this light of he was just trying to help out his friend mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah um, and you get a lot of those uh, everyone's just so human in this in this show you, you see the struggle of these people who don't a lot of them I mean like you you have Economos, who's not used to being out in the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, Adebayo, who's definitely not used to being out in the field. And you're seeing the toll that this is taking on them. And you're seeing the weight of everything Peacemaker has always strived for. But he's just kind of suffering on the inside. Oh, yeah. He yearns for, for love. And it's, it's such a great breakdown and you're seeing how his belief system that he's built this whole identity off of has left led him down a road of being disillusioned mm -hmm. and, that's a good way to put that and I, I think uh, yeah I'm looking for one sentence here to sound smart and I think I finally got there you got there it, it took me good. a while it was beautiful though it took me a while it's 155 very eloquent <laughs> I was trying to find something <laughs> and I think I got it absolutely yeah. I yeah. applaud you for that and uh, yeah that was uh, it was there's something that's so enveloping about this show mm -hmm. and I it's it's just it's a, it's that weird that, that a, unusual voice you can't and might you, you can't quite put your finger on sometimes it, but there's something so unique about it because mm -hmm. it it's what I love is that it just sticks to a tone you know what I mean yeah it sticks to a some shows try to do like all the tones in one like what's this what, what's the kind of tones we're trying to cover and they would try to keep it all present in one and while they do that here it's like no this one's more of this kind of episode mm -hmm. let's not worry so much about trying to be funny yeah 
Well, there's like some funny scenes that it's not, it doesn't seem like concerned with that in a lot of moments. Yeah, well, cause I mean, there's so much inherent humor just to how clearly the characters are drawn and how clear their world mm -hmm. views are. And this one, yeah, I, I, it felt like a recuperating and, and reorganizing kind of episode just for the position that they're in. But you're also, yeah, getting a glimpse into how isolating this is and how kind of sad and alone it leaves most everybody feeling for one reason or another. And it, it reminded me of that thing he said to economists in this first or second episode, that whole joke bit about like, you know, we could probably be really good friends, but I'm pushing you away because I don't want to open up to that. You know, and I felt that again here with Adrian Chase in the car where they're having that really passive aggressive back and forth where he's trying to pretend like he's not upset about Peacemaker not really caring about him getting tortured or whatever like there are all these feelings that people because of the need to be tough and because of the need to you know make the hard decisions you know people are holding up and bottling up and it makes for a nice I think character oriented tension because aside from the reveal at the end with Mern it's more like now these people have more and more reasons not to trust each other and the fragility of their you know uh, uh, working bond as a unit is really kind of at the center in an episode yeah. like this because half the action is like we can't have Peacemaker finding out about what we did to his oh crap, crap he found out what he did with what we did to his dad so now he's gonna go there and I love that you know I think James Gunn is also especially good at making it not feel like there are plot mechanics happening. It's like he just goes in and does talk to him and he gives him some information. It's probably bad for uh, for Augie to have. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like the way that he's able to orchestrate a believable mess based on these character motivations of again, yeah, like people also looking for this approval. To some extent, everybody has some kind of approval that they are sort of desperate to earn, at least as far as the team is concerned. And so everyone at some point has an opportunity to act sort of in whatever they think suits that best interest of the overall mission. And like, he, he's good at drawing these believably wacky, but also kind of touchingly dysfunctional groups. And uh, yeah, like you feel... I'm curious to see what kind of, you know, team formation comes by the end of it, if there is a sort of triumphant, like, no, 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 we finally all figured out how we work best together, or not, because it seems like this team is hanging on by a thread, and I, I like that tension <laughs> and and yeah like the the silent way in which he brings in some of that backstory it's like you know there's a lot you can surmise about chris and august's relationship but seeing even those flashes of like we don't know exactly verbatim what happened to his brother for instance but we have a pretty solid idea from those flashes and i feel like to play it that way is that much more impactful because it's in the emotion it's deep within the emotion of the character in that scene whether or not chris's emotion plays a little bit goofy just because of who the character is it's still palpable and it's still tangible and even the use of his name like i figured like they've used that breaking between peacemaker versus chris in a you know in a subtle but also i think very kind of striking way and uh, i appreciated the way that that you know continued through here and uh i think probably just the most badass moment of this episode it's like it's there were some good fights and there were some like you know moments that made you go ooh. but the one like truly badass sequence here for me was yeah when when chase sits down with them at the you know in the jail with the poker game and starts grilling them on their favorite contributions from black americans to society like, that was the one where it's like, all right, we're stepping up and doing something, you know, kind of badass. But the rest of the time, yeah, like, it maintained all of those, you know, really enjoyable, like you said, that enjoyable array of tones, but in a package that felt appropriately sort of baleful for all the things that have happened. And it is, I mean, you know, ostensibly we're sort of through Act 1 into Act 2 now of the overall story. And I think that first three makes for a nice place setting, and now it makes sense to kind of go into a valley after that for a little bit. Uh, yeah, we're at the midpoint. Mm -hmm. I mean, you touched on something that I think is what the show is ultimately doing, is the, the way how I often see it brought up with Batman is, you know, like, this, this story, you know, it's, it's not really about Batman, it's about Bruce Wayne. <laughs> and, and I think what this show does is it, 
Suicide Squad introduced us to Peacemaker, and this is showing us Chris. Yeah. And that's like the personality, the human behind it. And they still maintain humanizing, even when you don't. I think I think what the, the show does so well is they humanize them when you least expect it, in the most, in the most. Uh, sometimes it can feel like a peculiar moment where they're, like like when um, Adebayo is visiting, it, it stops Chris when he's on his way to, to to see his dad at the at the police station at jail. And there's this one shot where, you know, like he, he's being confronted with the fact that his dad is a horrible person, is a racist, and they're, they're having that whole parental discussion about the how we how we view our parents and that we want to believe like, yeah, they're flawed, but on the inside they're good. But sometimes we have to accept the fact that they really just aren't good people, and which is a hard thing to accept. And um, which I think in, in a lot of ways, it's a very, I think it's a very relatable uh, uh, quality to imprint onto the character for, for the audience. Because uh, I, I think you know, there's a lot of people out there who come from abusive families where, you know, and his dad is is the, I'm surprised Chris didn't end up that way, you know, <laughs> where he doesn't, they don't portray him to be racist at all. Not a hateful guy, yeah. Yeah, no, it, they, he, he's always been uh, very, everything about him is very childlike and just wants to, he just wants to be loved. That's that's everything about his characters. He just he just want no matter what it is, he wants to be loved. And it makes sense where, you know, in Suicide Squad, you see him on a military, you know, covert mission. Whereas here, he, he's in his hometown, <laughs> where you know, like you would you would expect that it wouldn't be the same type of vibe. Whereas a military, you have peacemakers that do a job to serve his country, and they at least flesh out for him what it is he has to do and why, and. He's not even really understanding why he's doing what he's doing. But back to that moment I was talking about, we're outside of the jail when Adebayo's confronting him. There's this like one shot where it cuts to Adrian just watching him. Because there's a lot, you have the scene in the car where he's like, your dad's racist, and they make, they make humor out of it. They bring the funny in that scene. But you see in that look where Adrian, when he's just watching him, of, oh, everything he was saying, he was saying from a sympathetic way of, of, of a caring place. You know, like he questions, he's like, why don't you just kill him? <laughs> why why have you never killed your dad? Well, Adrian's a little bit more psychotic. Um, do you know what look I'm talking about? When uh, Adebayo is confronting him and then Chris looks at, John Cena looks at, Adrian for just like a brief moment. It's mm. like this one second shot and Chris is just, Adrian's just standing there just looking at him watching. And he's realized, like I think in that moment, he's that, that's right before he says, but he's still my father. Mm -hmm. Of, he's realized, like that's the truth. And I think in like, for, for James, for, some credit has to go to the director of this episode. <laughs> but yeah, but the, for, for the, for the type of visual language that James Gunn strikes, which is so often associated with his dialogue, I think what he can do really well is also bring out powerful moments in, in certain quiet sections. Mm. And uh, I think that's the most when I feel like I'm really learning about who these characters are. A lot of it is things that, um, like you said, you can surmise just because of watching how these characters are, some things they say in their humor, but their most authentic traits seem to shine through most in just in their expressive times when they're not even talking mm -hmm. so yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's really it's really strong that arena and it's uh yeah this was, this was a good one and i think what they're doing with robert patrick is very fascinating because while it doesn't seem like they're trying to get you to it seems like they're doing exactly what adebayo said about him mm -hmm. that he he's a awful human being and they're just letting him be an awful human being mm -hmm. and they're not trying to get you to see the and maybe see the show will do sees. yeah maybe and maybe they will but at this point i don't feel like the show's interested or it has a motivation to do such a thing mm -hmm. it seems like what they want uh, they're letting him be that but they're still making him feel 
very human in that approach. Like I made, I made the joke about like he's playing the Johnny Cash dad again. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when he's like the wrong kid died, and I'm saying it could be that. Yeah, it could be. Oh, yeah, 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 it yeah, could yeah. just be like the most generic. I was just grieving over your brother so much that I lost sight of you. <laughs> yeah, but he, but he's not. He's not that. No. He still feels like. I think that's what makes Robert Patrick's performance so strong, is because the writing of him is feels like a real guy. Yeah, you it's know. not a caricature of a racist guy. It feels much meaner and more uncomfortable than that. Yeah, because he's someone who you could walk who could walk amongst us who you would only suspect but wouldn't know unless you got to know him. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? absolutely. So I, I think this is a really, really cool show mm-hmm. in, in, in every regard. This is the kind of episode that I think on, I'm hoping that this is not the kind of episode that would make audiences like be like, boring. Oh, it slowed down after episode three. Yeah, yeah I mean, if, if this was one of the Disney plus Marvel shows, this is the odds are people would say that, right? The episode that's only devoted to character development and slowing down. Bring back the action. Which is usually the third or fourth episode in those shows, to be fair. Yeah. And uh, and we tend to love those episodes uh, a lot. Uh, but this commits to it because of the fact that it's HBO Max, it's R-rated, um, that it, it, it can be just more adult yeah. in, in every regard yeah more, more mature so it could be super adult with its violence and its humor and then it could be super adult with its character exploration and its themes mm-hmm. and like those flashbacks are, are disturbing they're, they're very oh, yeah. dis- they're they're disturbing and fucking john cena man like i i just i don't know what it is i'm like this guy can it's this, weird. I can act too. Like he's a really great actor. He's he's great. He, he, like, how many roles can you think of like this where you could? Because because I, I I remember you know walking out of the Suicide Squad and and saying and was, I remember when I called you and I was like, dude, like John Cena in this is this is the first role I've ever seen of him where I I just only saw P, the character he was playing and I wasn't seeing John Cena like he was very believable. Mm-hmm. And but it still leaned into the John Cena strengths that you would be presumptuous about mm. of why you would cast John Cena in that role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then here I'm like, oh, he can carry a show because he's also got the depth. Yeah. And I think that's what's so surprising about his performance mm-hmm. is there's so much depth because he can do the comedy of like the freaking judo master like the martial arts bit of like all it takes is concentration <laughs> move your kidney <laughs> up into your heart <laughs> use it as blood flow like, it was so funny and it's like that's why you cast John Cena for the, yeah. for shit like that usually like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the comedy and whatever mm-hmm. um, or to be a tough guy or something but man when he is those scenes with Robert Patrick or the scenes by himself Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> and he's had a bunch of those uh, so far, and yeah. he's yeah, he's so still good. He's main, so good. You still just see the character, and yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It's like John Cena up until this point has yeah, like has a lot of goodwill. I've enjoyed him in a ton of things, and I think we've we've kind of been at that precipice of like okay, yeah, he's got a lot of charm, got a lot of comedic ability, but you know that last little layer is you know the the believable emotional depth, and I feel like this show could have gone really wrong or it could have been not quite as like it could have been just shy of how great it's been if he didn't have that extra ounce and I think yeah whatever whatever he has done up until this point to get that little bit of extra you know emotional nuance visible in his performances I think is is fantastic because it really ties all of this together he brings a level of sincere sensitivity I think is what it is you know Mm. And uh, I really, I really appreciate this. Like he, he, he is he, I'm trying to think. Is it, you know they they make the jokes about him being racist, but I can't co- recall anything where I'm like he's portrayed as a racist. Not really. I mean, there have been a couple of moments where it seems like he's saying, like they're they're funny, but I, I feel like in the first or second episode there was something about him being 
very uh, uh, embracing of various cultures or something like that. So I feel like he may be, you know, like racist in the way that like ignorantly racist where like I'm sure he's got some problematic things to say. He's got some like, yeah, he's got or, some learning, but he's not not racist and not that this is a justification. <laughs> not racist. Not though, fully racist. Yeah, not like he's going to hurt someone because of the color of their race. I, yeah. Like, at least this show hasn't sh had a scene that displays that. I can't think of anything in the Suicide Squad that showed that, so... Yeah. It's apparently it's something in the character's history, mm -hmm. or maybe it's just by nature of association with your dad being White Dragon. Um, He's, yeah. He strikes me as a character who's not racist, but who might still reveal themselves to be ignorant in that area, even when trying to be helpful. <laughs> I feel like he would stereotype people. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think... Just because that's what he knows. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like black people love that, right? Or, yeah, yeah, that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah or, or Asian people don't like this. <laughs> you know, yeah. something, something like that. Um, Not because you're black, but you know, just you happen to be black. <laughs> you know? I can see yeah. him getting into a, a very understandable, uh, uh, you know, ignorance-based misunderstanding or something like that. Yeah. yeah, but he doesn't seem. We're only defending him because he's a white man. A That's... white man can get away with it. Yeah, it's not that let's, bad. Let's say know. we're providing no nuance to this discussion <laughs> whatsoever. I think that is also a, a good thing because it, it's clear, yeah, you look at their history and I'm like, I'm sure this guy has some problematic things to say because, I mean, when it comes to, like, yeah. sexual things, he, he does across the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So, you know, it's like, I'm sure it's there, but, yeah, it, it seems to draw that marked difference of, like, this, this doesn't seem like somebody who wants to be racist and who wants to do that kind of damage and probably just has some nasty kinks to work out because of that very relevant i mean conundrum of i love my dad except my dad's terrible what do i do and in trying to gain that approval i'm sure that there's some stuff that yeah is problematic coming from chris mm -hmm. in that pursuit but yeah it's interesting to see a character who can exist problematically because of course they would be a problematic person mm -hmm. and maybe they'll be a little less problematic by the time this is done <laughs> Well, I like the hell out of it. I mm. think I, I think it's uh, I think it's an amazing show. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really easy to get lost in it. Mm. And, I, and I like. I guess my last thing I'll say is why I like saying that about it is because it's not when I say usually when you say like you get lost in it, it's usually associated with something that is a, a little bit more fantastical or supernatural or sci-fi. Mm. And <laughs> this is not that. <laughs> this is not that. You know, while it has those qualities, obviously, mm. um, like especially sci-fi and and superhero, you, you know, it, it it's it's just like the, hanging out with with the characters. It's like the excitement's not from the mission. Yeah. You know, and uh, the mission's just a cherry on top to give us some like cool violent shit. Mm -hmm. Although I do think the fight with Judo Master and John, if I had a criticism, I don't think the fight with Judo Master, I thought the fight with Judo Master in, in the last episode was really good. Mm -hmm. Didn't really care for the fight here. Something kind of off about it. There were moments, but it, it could have been just captured, I think, more sumptuously. Like, I think yeah. they did some nice things in terms of having, like, little... Tight, little locked off shots, yeah. Yeah, little tiny, like, crash zooms or things like that to, like, accentuate certain impact moments. But, uh, yeah, as far as fight scenes go, it was... Not the most like graceful, or not the most like gracefully captured. I would say, I guess. especially a one-on-one -on -one with Judo Master and Peacemaker in the light. It seems like you'd want to make that like a full-on set piece. Yeah, but the, something about it felt like I was still watching choreographed actors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like I liked how much of a of an unflashy sort of brawl it was, but there is, yeah, it didn't quite feel like it was full full on fight speed or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, um, that's so minor because the takeaway is not usually that. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the takeaway of that scene is it just becomes the. The butterflies you don't understand, you know, what is it that we don't understand? Mm -hmm. You know, all right guys. Well Thanks for being here <laughs> So sorry <laughs> yeah, for Johnny, excuse me uh, Thanks for being here and um, We'll catch you guys soon